Hi, this is Eric with Ultramax Sports, talking about the concept of minimalism and finding the right shoe for your foot. Here we're looking at three types of shoes. The first is a traditional shoe. This is the type of shoe we've all been running in for about the last 30 years. There's three aspects to traditional shoes that aren't the greatest for the human foot. The first is the elevated heel. Most traditional shoes are uh, running about a 10 millimeter differential between the heel and the toe. Uh, 10 to 12 and so that means the heel is higher than the, the toes. And what this does, it changes the way you run, it changes the way um, you stand, and changes the way the foot uh, is loaded and activated and as well as uh, joint loads. The second aspect is the tapered toe box. If you ever see a newborn baby's foot, the toes are splayed wide apart and even somebody who grew up without, a, or without shoes, it's the same. So this tapered toe boxes cause permanent deforming of, of the, the foot. And so we see things like bunions, hammer toes, and other deformities as a result of that. It's also a much less stable platform. We have a wide toe base, particularly that big toe being real wide, set apart. Uh, it's a lot more stable landing platform. And the third aspect of traditional shoes is all the cushion between you and the ground. Uh, a good... Uh, analogy is uh, walking around with uh, oven mitts on your fingers. You quickly lose the ability to sense the ground and uh, you also will run heavier with more impact on your joints. We've seen data when we have runners run across a pressure point with shoes on and then barefoot they have consistently more impact on the joints when we run with shoes on. So the thought is the human body, the brain, thinks that the shoe is providing the cushioning so it doesn't have to work as hard. So there's not as much cushioning done by the muscles and the joints, um, flexing of the joints specifically. And so uh, a minimalist shoe then, and here's an example of a Vibram Five Finger, has none of those three qualities. Little to zero elevation a wide forefoot with the toes wider, the widest part of the foot, and zero little to no cushioning. This is just basically a piece of rubber, a few millimeters thick between you and the ground to prevent you from getting cut. Now, is it smart for you, if you've been running in a traditional shoe, to move to a minimalist shoe? The answer may, may, not, be, may not be yes. If you're running injury-free, you're happy, and you're not really interested in, in going minimalist, and you're not, you really don't want to take the risk, then stay in your traditional shoe and keep running. That's the important thing. But if you are somebody who's been struggling with injuries for quite some time, you're curious about this whole minimalist thing, uh, it, may, it may be worth trying out. Um, the safest way to adapt is to, is to use a more minimalist shoe in casual use. Uh, when we run there's a lot more loading of the joints and the muscles and so we're a little bit more at risk particularly if you're going to run in it uh, a minimal issue of, of uh, calf, Achilles tendon, plantar fascia type problems even stress, fr stress fractures in the uh, in the foot. Um, so if you're going to go casual you're pretty safe even in a pretty minimal issue. Uh, if you're wanting to switch to running in a more minimalist shoe, then you may think about going to an in-between shoe. And so you know, the question is, how the most minimalist that you can tolerate, that you can handle right now, given your strength and structure, etc. And so this is a good example of an in-between shoe. It's called the Saucony Convara. And it, has, um, it still has a tapered toe box. It still has a whole lot of cushioning but the elevation between the heel and the toe isn't nearly as great as a traditional shoe. This shoe, depending upon who you talk to and who measures it, is anywhere between four and six millimeters higher in the heel than the toe. And so that is a better thing uh, than, uh, than a higher elevation. Now, somebody who has a history of Achilles tendon problems, plantar fasciitis, that person wants to rethink this drop in the heel. But for most people who don't have those issues, this is a pretty safe type of shoe to move into. 
as we mentioned, most traditional shoes are running about 12 millimeters uh, offset. And now we have lots of options in between. While this is a four, we have several eights in various brands. There's sixes, there's threes, there's twos, there's ones. And then of course there's lots of brands with zero. There are other factors that come into play when picking a shoe. It's not just all about should you go minimalist or not. Uh, forefoot flexibility, how much you pronate, the structural shape of your foot, of the rear foot, of the forefoot, uh, the shape of your legs, strength, muscle imbalances. So all that comes into play. If you're real serious about running, and particularly if you've really had some injuries, it's probably a good idea to go somewhere where they specialize in a video gait analysis and doing a manual check of your of your structure uh, to find out to help you kind of narrow down the right shoe for your foot. Uh, Ultramax Sports, we we do uh, video gait analysis, and so we'd sure welcome you to come in and try that out sometime. Happy to spend as much time as you like talking about the whole minimalist trend. A lot of us subscribe to it. Not all of us go to the Vibram Five Finger level. Um, a lot of us uh, are choosing here, and and we're finding that running a little faster, a little healthier, and um, and it's it's nice to switch off. Just because maybe you do switch to a minimalist shoe doesn't mean you have to stay in that shoe all the time. For different surfaces and different uses, maybe you do switch between a traditional shoe and an in-between shoe or a minimalist shoe, depending upon your usage. So again, this is Eric at Ultramax Sports. Thanks for listening.